Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and start our look into the new features that have been available with the spring update for 2016, some of the new solutions that Microsoft are releasing as preferred solutions. And we're going to start with field service. Now, I know field service isn't necessarily the new one out of the bunch. I know project service and, and portals are ones that have also been released. But you know, this one, we'll kind of go ahead and start with this one first, just because this one has already been somewhat released and there's been a few little slightly tweaks to it and options associated with it. Now I know when you think of field service everybody thinks of you know hey we already had service scheduling why do we need to move on to that? Well I think you're going to see that field services is obviously a huge step forward in regards to what you're looking at. Now the big thing to remember with field services obviously is is right now where it sits it's included as kind of a trial option so you can have a field services trial to experiment with some of the different functionality and then you can start building and and working with it from there based upon if you decide it's something that works for your organization so before we delve too far into this just a couple of quick things much like we did when we did the voice of the customer, there's a lot of moving pieces to this. So this is absolutely something that I can't give you a start to finish demonstration on in a 10 to 12 minute video. Hopefully at the very least, we can get you started and have you understand what some of the generalized concepts are that you can work with and then build solutions from there. And then in future videos, we can delve into real specific elements of the application itself. But again, there's a lot of moving pieces. So just like anything, it's in an online preview at this point. So you would have to go into your admin portal, select your CRM instance, choose to go ahead and add the field service trial to your solution because it's in trial mode at this point. That'll add the solution and then you can start working with it from there. And so once it's installed, you will have the ability to do things like create work orders, work with uh, customer agreements, work with accounts, work with contacts, view and, and work with purchase orders, but you all have to do a little bit of setup and administration. And so when you go into your setup and administration area, this is where you're going to define specific features and elements of the application that you're working with. And so obviously some of the key features that you'll have to bring in are going to be things like priceless. So these are going to be your priceless that will be used for the services that you provide when you associate them with work orders and agreements and those items. You're going to want to make sure you have your products set up, particularly if you're adding products or services to your specific work orders when you're when you're creating your work orders from an application standpoint. You'll want to create what are called work order types. So these work order types are going to define the type of work orders that you enter in the system. And so here we have just some simplistic ones that we might have for a service-based organization where maybe something got escalated from help desk and so it's on site. We have break fix information. We have maintenance agreements. These would be kind of our standard work order types. The other items that you're going to have within here are things like characteristics. And so this is where you can start associating skills and education sets with individual bookable resources in your application. That way, when you're trying to schedule a work order or try to schedule something from an application standpoint, you can look at specific skill sets needed. And based upon those skill sets, you would have the ability to schedule people for those individual items. You're also going to have things like bookable resource categories. So here's where you can have different categories of resources based upon the types of things that you're working with. So we might have project engineers, we might have field level technicians, we might have network service engineers that are used for our organization. And then this you're also going to see kind of one of your major area. This is where you're going to see kind of your bookable resources. And your bookable resources are the resources that will be scheduled on these work orders. And these are going to include things like you know individual users from a, from a CRM perspective. These are going to include things like pieces of equipment. They can include contacts. They can include accounts. Now, I'm not necessarily going to create a bookable resource at this point, but when I go in to create a bookable resource, you'll see that I have different options that I can define. So there's a so definitive resource type that you can work with. And in here, I can specify what type of item it is. And then based upon what it is, it will go in and give me different options that I can select. So obviously, if it's a user, I'm going to tie it to a user account in the application. If it's an account, I'm going to tie it into a, a, an account within the application. So it gives me those mechanisms to be able to work with and tie that information accordingly. The other thing that you have to remember is, you know, much like we did with service scheduling, um, you still have to have your work or your, your working hours. So people understand when these available resources are scheduled to be booked and can actually be booked as part of the application itself. The other things that you have in here that
that make booking things a little bit easier, you have things like priorities and you have things like work order substatuses. This is where you can use kind of color coding from a priority standpoint to have a priority associated with a work order when it's created. And you can use work, things like work order substatuses and booking statuses to better map specific things to based upon what people are doing. Now, there's other items in here like incident types and service types and those items. And again, we will spend some time delving into those in future videos, but these are some of the key initial pieces that you want to look at. Let's talk a little bit about some of the individualized components. So if I go back up into field service, I'll see a couple of areas here. Two key areas to draw your attention to are work orders and the schedule board. Work orders are exactly what they sound like they are. They're the work order that's going to be scheduled where somebody's going to perform some type of work at an application level. The nice thing about the work orders is work orders can be created manually. Work orders can actually auto be, gener be auto generated from a, an agreement. So an agreement would be like a service level agreement where maybe you promise to do you know certain maintenance tasks for these customers every month. Well, every month you're going to dispatch somebody out to like fix a printer or something. These agreements allow you to set up the time frame associated with those agreements, set out the frequency of how often you want to invoice as well as book those those work orders and then it will automatically create the work orders two or three days before the work order is scheduled to happen. So that way somebody can go out and schedule that information when they're working with it. So it gives you a mechanism to be able to drive that. Your scheduling, your work orders also have the ability to be associated or created from like a case. So if a help desk technician is working on a case and now they need to escalate it, they can create a work order from that case and associate it with the originating case. Or you can just create work orders kind of in general. Once a work order is created, then it will need to be scheduled. And that's where your schedule board comes into play. And so this is where through a, a variety of different situations, you can actually schedule items and work with information from there. Now, the other thing that you have is with your accounts. So these are obviously the accounts that you're going to be servicing within your organization. These would be your standard accounts and CRM. One major thing that they add into the item that you're working with is they add a geo uh, geocoding for addresses. And so what this basically allows you to do is to use mapping functionality to pinpoint where that address is located on the actual form. So when I go into this geocode, it actually shows me the geocode for the address, pulls up the map, and I can see specifically where that item is within the application itself. So it gives me a mechanism to be able to work through those items as I'm going through. The nice thing about this geocoding is this is ultimately what's going to be used in the scheduling assistant to help schedule items as people are moving through. So let's just go ahead and look at this from kind of start to finish. So I'm going to go ahead and create a work order. And again, this is a very simplistic example just to kind of get things started. Go ahead and pick up, pick the work order that I want to create. In the administrative settings, you have some capabilities for initial configuration to you know, turn on geocoding from an address synchronization standpoint. You can also set your starting number for your work orders and those kind of things. So you have a little bit of control over the work order numbers that you want to work with. And then it will synchronously add numbers to that as you're moving forward. So when I come into my service account, I'm going to pick the account that I want to a service. In this case, maybe we'll just go ahead and choose AdventureWorks. Then it's going to give me some different system statuses. So within these system statuses, this is how I want this work order to appear. And I can assign different substatuses and items to these based upon what we're doing. But right now, this work order, when it's created, it's going to be unscheduled. So it ultimately needs to be scheduled from an application standpoint. The other thing that you'll see in here is what are called incident types. Now, what an incident type allows you to do is to template out generalized common problems or items that you may work with from an application perspective. So for example, printer, printer maintenance. If I'm going to send somebody out and dispatch somebody to go ahead and fix a printer, I know about how long that takes. But at the same point in time, I can assign specific tasks to that printer maintenance that make up that hour and a half duration. So you know, maybe I have to change the PM kit, maybe I have to change the toner, those types of different situations. I have those items that I can work with from here. And so these incident types allow you to very quickly set up these work orders because all the tasks and items that would be associated with them can be predefined on those individual situations, which makes setting up information much easier as you're going through. 
You can also see where this work order type kind of defined what it that it's a maintenance agreement because when I set up the incident type, it allowed me to specify what type of work order uh, it scenario it would be. So it allowed me to specify that it would be a maintenance agreement. It realizes what territory this customer is in and pre-fills in service territories based upon those items. I can also distinguish whether or not it's a taxable item. I can specify sales tax codes. So within the application, I can set up different sales tax codes based upon the items that I want to work with. So this gives you a lot of flexibility, you know, because obviously different services and different parts of the country and different states are going to be taxable or not taxable in certain situations. You know, sometimes if it's interstate, um, you know, within the specific state, it is taxable. Sometimes it's not. If this was associated with a, another work order or if this was associated with a service agreement, I would also be able to see that information in here. So now I can save this work order. Just a sec here. And once this work order is saved, now it would be available for me to schedule or work with from an application standpoint. Now, I just want to show you a couple other things. I'm going to go back into this work order. And one of the things that happened when I created the incident type was it allowed me to predetermine some of the different tasks that might be associated with this. So if I come down into this service task options now, I can see these are all the different tasks that would be expected to be done with this situation. I need to replace the PM kit first, then I need to clean the printer heads, then I need to replace the toner, then I need to pr uh, test the printer, and then I need to wrap it up. And I can go into these individual tasks and I can set a duration based upon those options and work with the information from there. So signify how complete it is from that standpoint. Now, if I go real quick, um, if I go back into field service and I go into schedule board, this is where I can start scheduling the service calls uh, for the items that I'm working with. Now, this is a very uh, simplistic um, setup at this point. I only have a couple of resources defined just to make it easier to see how these things are going to be scheduled from, from an application standpoint. There's a lot more automation that can be built into this, but this at least gives you a starting point to see what would happen. So once this initial service board loads up, I can now start scheduling resources. Now, I have different ways that I can filter some of this information down too. So it's going to give me kind of a map view functionality that I can work with and then it's also going to give me a functionality where I can filter information down and so in here now I can see that I have different uh, filter options so in this case I'm filtering users based upon their region I can pick different service territories and I can apply filters and now it can show me different people that are available based upon the regions that are associated with it and now I can pick different resources and I can apply filters and I can pick and choose which individual items I want to work with. The other thing that's nice is as these things are scheduled, it will show me what people's schedules look like. Now at this point, it's a brand new incident, so I don't really have anything scheduled, but I can come over here now and I can drag these work orders to specific days and place them in for specific people. And then it will schedule those work orders based upon the type of option that you know we created. So this gives us some nice flexibility to be able to just kind of generate these individual schedules. And the other thing that's nice with these different map views is I am now using the map view, I can kind of see where things are located. Now, again, these are wide varieties of, of discrepancies just based upon the sample data, but it gives me the capabilities to see where things are located and then using some of those individual situations I now can schedule people accordingly. The other thing that we haven't talked about and mainly just because we're running out of time is there is a new updated mobile app for service and so if you go into your app store you will see a field service app for by Microsoft that you now can go ahead and download which will start to also give you some of those capabilities to view this information on mobile devices. Now again this was just a starting point I, I hope it was at least beneficial to get things going in another video we'll delve more into like the automation around different things so you can see how agreements and different things work from there
So that's going to do it for our quick look into field service. Again, I hope you found it beneficial. In future videos, we'll delve more into kind of this, the setup of the individual situation so you can see how agreements work. You can see how we set up those incident types. You can see how to use the scheduling assistant to actually schedule things within the application and work with items from there. But at least this got us started and you can see how what's available from it. I would highly recommend you know, going out and signing up for a trial. It gives you an opportunity to experiment with it. So again, for for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.